boys and girls, it's Queen Bee from Honey Bee Toys. Mama, today I'm going to show you how to make these Shopkins inspired pinatas. I don't know about you, but my daughter is obsessed with Shopkins. So I thought it would be cute to make a pinata for her. And these are mini pinatas, so they're very small. And I don't think you would actually hit them or anything like that. But you can see you can um, stuff them with candy and then just give them, give them as a treat. Or you can actually make them life size or uh, pinata size. You just have to scale my tutorial up. So you can make it either size. It's easier to do the tutorial small and it is a lot faster. So I'm going to show you how to make this popsicle one. But it'll be the same type of instructions for the watermelon one or any other Shopkins pinata that you would want to make. So let's get started. For this tutorial, you will need a ruler, a craft knife or scissors, a printout of um, the shopkins that you want to make the pinata for. So I'm going to make this popsicle one. Crepe paper, and then it's actually easier if you have this type of crepe paper, but I only have like the big sheets, so I'm going to use the big sheets so you can certainly use this type of crepe paper. It's crepe streamers. Uh, in the color of the shopkin that you want to make, tape, a craft stick or a popsicle stick, and but this is because I'm making a popsicle. Um, pinata and this is a cereal box but if you were to make a big pinata you want to use a big cardboard box and a red marker like this and that is to outline the Shopkins um, feet so you want it in the color of your Shopkin. Okay so let's get started. I'm going to start off by taking the image of my Shopkin and cutting it out. This will be the template for my pinata. However if you're making a larger pinata you can measure the image and then scale the pinata accordingly. After you have your Shopkin cut out, you will use this as a template to cut out two identical pieces on your cereal box. Now that you have the front and back of your pinata, you need the sides. To do this, you will need to cut out a long strip for the border. Taking the same cereal box, I cut out one long strip that is around an inch wide. Now that I cut my border strip, I need to cut a small slit for the popsicle stick to fit into. I do this by measuring it up against the front of the pinata. You now want to take your bottom template piece and attach it to the border. I'm using a small piece of tape and taping all around the sides of the pinata. Once I got to the end of the pinata, I noticed that my border piece was a little too short. This is okay because I did need an opening to stuff candy. To remedy this, I took a small piece of cardboard and taped it to the end, and that would create a small tab for me to open and close so I can stuff it with candy. So here's a tab where I could fill the candy. Now I'm going to attach the top template piece to the border using the same technique as I did previously. Here is the foundation of the pinata all put together. You will notice that some pieces may stick out, which is fine. You could take a scissor and trim off the corners that stick out. This pinata is now ready for some fringe. I'll show you how to make the fringe in a simple technique that does not require any special tools. You do want to use crepe paper uh, if you have it, but if you don't, you can certainly use tissue paper. Crepe paper is a little easier to work with because it is stretchier. To make the fringe, I cut out a long and wide sheet of crepe paper. I'm going to cut this crepe paper into two strips and then cut, start cutting the fringe. To cut the strips, I fold the paper into fourths and then cut it lengthwise. Now I stack the two strips together and then fold it over a few more times to cut the fringe. This helps in time because you're cutting multiple layers all in one time. Before you cover the pinata with fringe, you do want to cover the bottom border of the pinata. This is because there's no fringe on the bottom border and you will be able to see raw cardboard if you do not cover it. Now that the bottom border is covered, you're ready to start covering the entire pinata with the fringe that you made. Just start all the way from the bottom and start gluing all the way up to the top. Okay, so I covered my pinata all the way from the bottom to the top. And if you're wondering what happened to the flop on the side, I just covered directly over that and I'm just going to snip through the crepe paper to open up the tab. Now you're also going to want to cover up the top. To do this, you're going to make double-sided fringe to cover the top. 
To do this, I'm going to take a piece of crepe paper that's around three times the width of my pinata and a one and a half times the length. I'm going to fold the paper lengthwise twice and then fold over the paper widthwise once and cut the fringe on both sides and glue it to the top. Before you stick your top fringe onto your pinata, you do want to make sure that you glue your popsicle stick in. This is because you do not want to pierce your crepe paper with your popsicle stick as it may tear. So I'm just going to take my popsicle stick, cut it in half, and stick it into the slit I made previously. Once your popsicle stick is in, you do want to cut a slit in your crepe paper so that your top fringe will slip into your popsicle stick. Now your Shopkins pinata is ready for its eyes. I'm going to take the same template that I printed out and cut out the eyes and glue them onto the pinata. After the eyes are glued on, you're ready to make the arms and the feet of the pinata. I do this by taking a few sheets of craft paper and cutting out jelly bean or peanut shaped arms and legs and then just gluing it directly onto the pinata. There's no exact science to this. You could also take the template that you use to cut out the pinata and cut out the arms and feet and trace it. But for me, it just worked easier to just eyeball it and cut it out with a scissor. To give the arms and legs some definition, because it will be pink on pink on the pinata, I took a red Crayola marker and just drew around it to give it some shadow so there's some definition when you look at the pinata. I glued on the arms and the legs of the pinata and took that same red marker to draw on the nose and the mouth. As you can see, the pinata on the left is what I made earlier, and I didn't use a template for that one, so it's not as proportioned, but just as cute. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And stay tuned for my big Shopkins giveaway. Thanks for watching and bye now.